Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 9th and we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop here. You can see this a low pressure system forming. It's going to be moving towards Southern California. We've got our own frontal system here across Pacific Northwest. It is kicking off some lenticular clouds across some of the Cascades right now. It continues to rain across some of Northwest Washington, Vancouver Island, and Southwest BC where they picked up some pretty huge amounts of rain with this atmospheric river continuing over the area. This is going to continue to slide down across the region, but it'll be weakening as it does so. And then we'll take a look at our next frontal system off the coastline. And we'll take a look at the extended forecast as always as we go through the video here this morning. And you can see those lenticular clouds kicking off across some of the Cascades, especially if you're east of the Cascades, there, you're probably catching some of that. Not too visible from here, trying to look at Mount Rainier, but. We do have rainfall falling across northwest Washington, and this will be sliding down across some of the Puget Sound today and weakening as it does so, pushing across the Cascades and then eventually down into Oregon there as this frontal system weakens. And if you would, check out Worldwide Weather Watch. It's the third channel I've done now. Uh, the, of course, the California and the Pacific Northwest Weather Watch channels will take priority, but I'll do these when I can. We'll take a look at some of the most fun weather out across the planet and do some educational stuff as well. So taking a look here, look at the Olympic Mounds the last 48 hours. Look at Forks picking up almost three inches of rainfall. Some areas of Vancouver Island are approaching five. There's a 4.3 for Squamish Airport in BC. So yeah, some uh, big time rainfall across Southwest BC, just like the models have been showing for a while. And I think I picked up like four hundredths of an inch there yesterday, just off to the west of SeaTac. And you see there was a little bit of light precipitation there as well. Looks like there's a winter weather advisory for some of the central and north Cascades also. Now, if you guys want to report your own weather and record your own weather, this is a good one to do it with the solar powered lightning detection system. You can see all the stuff that it does there. Help support the channel. Click on that link down below to save 10% off. Now, taking a look at last night's European model. So there's that system that's moving towards California. This is our weakening frontal system sliding across the area. But then quickly, we're going to spin up another storm off our coastline here the models have been weakening with it but it is going to bring another frontal system through and this uh, trough here is going to bring a very powerful system across the lower 48 states some severe weather some blizzard and warnings are probably going to go into effect and whatnot as this huge mid-latitude cyclone will be developing out there that's the trough causing it and you can see we're probably going to remain active as we go in towards next weekend as well as the gulf of alaska trough is going to be throwing some cold air and some additional systems at the pacific northwest as we go through the extended forecast now, if we take a wider look here, we're looking at North America. There's Alaska, there's California, there's Hudson Bay, and there's BC, Washington, and Oregon. Put that into motion. There's our first weakening frontal system we're dealing with today. And then we get this colder air arriving. And again, that's the big mid-latitude cyclone creator there. And you can see this cold air just continue across the Gulf of Alaska, throwing systems our way. Maybe a little bit of a break there for a couple of days, but then it looks like we remain active as we go through the extended forecast as well. Now, if we look at the artificial intelligence, you know, it's handled this system coming up this one right there. It, it's been handling that storm very well. And this one, the clear win for the artificial intelligence European model because it really picked up, you know, on this low not being that strong. It's still still fairly robust low moving into Vancouver Island, but not nearly the monster that the GFS and the European were showing. And those models have both backed off on the strength of this storm. And as far as windy conditions across the region, still going to be blustery for some, but artificial intelligence really won out on that round. And and then we're going to bring some additional systems in here. You can kind of see throwing some haymakers at us as we go through March 16th and on to March 17th. We wrap that up and we build a little bit of a ridge here. We'll see how long of a break we get in there. It's kind of way off from fantasy land to be worrying about that too much but just kind of showing you the extent of forecast does have this active weather continuing on in through you know the third and fourth week of march coming up now looking at 15 day precipitation anomalies there's a pacific northwest and you can see we are going to be above average if you believe the artificial intelligence model as we go through about march 23rd now this is what we can expect in the doppler radar today again this precipitation continuing sliding down across the olympic mountains by the time we get about noon here so now we only subtract seven because we are in daylight saving times, uh, saving time, and we're so this is about noon. There's one, two, three, four, five p.m. So it comes across the Puget Sound. There starts moving towards Portland by the time you get towards what your seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, there's midnight right there, kind of hung up across Oregon, but it is weakening, bringing some snowfall for the Cascades of Washington, Oregon as well. And some of the Blue Mountains out there, you see it tries to kick off a little precipitation across Northeast Washington, Spokane, the Idaho Panhandle, bringing some snowfall as well as we go on in through tomorrow morning. 
And then we wait for the next system. You can kind of see it gearing up here as we go towards the end of the run. It's spinning up right off our coastline there, and it's going to bring another round of precipitation. And uh, right on top of that, the pretty moderate and heavy amounts, some of Vancouver Island, Southwest BC, another round is coming here as we go through the day Tuesday. So you got to be prepared for that. Now, 100 meter wind speed. So as we go through the day today, we're going to pick up the winds here across some of the Puget Sound, Southwest Washington a little bit. You can see Northwest Interior. This is occurring at as we speak right now, and you can get some gusts up to 40 miles per hour for the Seattle Metro. You can see that atmospheric river bound boundary just weakening, hanging up across Oregon. And then we get the stronger system off our coastline spinning up. But it's going to be some uh, gusty winds to the coastal regions here. And you can see the low right up into Vancouver Island. And I shot a wind for the northwest interior there as well. So uh, we'll scroll off into the future a little bit more here, and there's some additional gusty systems out there, but nothing too major uh, as of right now. And if we take a look at the 10-meter accumulated max wind gusts, actually today you have Seattle 42, Tacoma 40, some gusty winds northwest and tier, some of the coastal regions there. So it's probably actually going to be windier for Seattle with today's frontal system versus the next one. You can see no jump in the wind speeds there, but there could be a gust of 50 on the coastline as that storm system moves up the region. And that would be on the day Tuesday. Now, taking a look here, uh, Quileute Airport, you can see the discombobulation now with the ensembles. It shows 45, and some of these members not showing much wind speed at all. A few of them still have some bigger gusts in there, but definitely not a big region-wide windstorm or anything. You see the uh, gusty conditions ongoing as we speak right now for some of the coastal areas. Seattle, Tacoma, same thing. This is for today, the control run as of last day. It showed 44, so it could be a bit blustery at times today, but that next system, it does not look like a windy one at all for the interior now. Now, taking a look at the artificial intelligence versus the GFS and Ensemble on the right will look out into the extended forecast a little bit here. So there goes the big uh, uh, trough here that's going to drive that very strong storm across the lower 48. We kind of get hung up in some of this colder air systems moving in here. Pretty good agreement between the GFS and the artificial intelligence with the trough hanging out all the way through the 16th. And then we build a ridge there. So maybe we'll get some nice springtime weather, something to look forward to. It's kind of far off in the forecast there, so, but it's always nice to dream. That would bring some nice weather for a bit. Then the artificial intelligence once or break down that ridge while the GFS kind of keeps something going here as well. And a big time discrepancy in the model runs through the extended forecast. So here's the 6 to 10 day below normal for the west. There's the above normal signal for the Pacific Northwest as we go through the 18th. And again, 8 to 14 day and above as we go through the 22nd. This might get switched up a little bit here if that ridge starts to show more in the model runs. And this is looking at Stevens Pass, snow water equivalent. You can see 81% of normal and some of the areas not doing too hot across the Washington Cascades, North Cascades as well. A little bit better across some portions of Oregon, but you know, some of the Cascades haven't been doing that well as well. So not a great showing there for a La Nina year, no doubt. Hopefully that doesn't set us up for a, a nasty wildfire season coming up here, but we'll have to see on that. And this is the temperature anomaly here for the lower 48 states starting January 1st through March 8th. You can kind of see a La Nina signature here across the Northwest. And a lot of times La Nina does not really show its face and bring its effects until you get to uh, you know, right after January 1st, a lot of times you'll start to see that. And you can kind of see that La Nina signature here across the Pacific Northwest, slightly below normal. And then you can see as you get across the Rockies and Montana and portions of Wyoming and some of the Dakotas there down through Nebraska, eastern Colorado and Kansas below normal since the beginning of the year as well. So Anyway, um, yeah, hope you guys are having a good day. Be prepared for that rain coming in here. Hopefully you set your clocks forward an hour. Um, check out the World Weather Wide Watch channel, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think below, and I will talk to you guys later.